Hi, my name is Bill Kennedy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get up and running with DGraph and GraphQL. I'm going to show you how to do that for your development environment. All right, so let's get started. Now, if you see here, I'm on Docker Hub, which is great because the DGraph team has already built containers that we can use both for production and our development environment. In fact, this one with the slash standalone is the development container that we're going to use. This is for development only. It says don't use in production. Now, if I do a quick DGraph search, you'll see that there is a slash DGraph container as well, and that's your production container. So we'll use that one for production. We'll use standalone for development. Now, as of the recording of this video, um, the latest version is back from uh, March 20th. You can see DGraph uses a date system for versioning. Um, and as of, as of 11 days ago, or the recording of this video, there was a .1 patch release um, provided. I'm going to be using the .0 version in this video, so that's OK. And I will have, I already have run docker pull uh, command. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and issue that docker pull command. Start bringing down dgraph standalone version 20.03.0, something I've already done. And once that's finished, then what you're going to be able to do is start up your dgraph environment. And we're just going to go into a terminal, and all you're going to have to do is run this docker command. Docker run, that's it. Now, the thing is important is that you've got to open up port 8080. 8080 is the endpoint for the GraphQL interface into dgraph. So make sure that you're running this Docker command, opening up port 8080 for your version of standalone, and we can get dgraph up and running. It's that simple. So there it is. We've got dgraph up and running and ready for uh, us to be able to start doing some development on it. Now, before we can do anything on the database, we have to define a schema. That's just the way this works. And you know, you're used to doing that in your SQL databases. Uh, not all your NoSQL databases require that. Um, we do require the schema here. And the schema in DGraph, basically, really with GraphQL, is just a type system. So we're just going to define a set of types with fields, and then we can also define how we search on them, and we can also define how they're related to each other. Now, I'm just going to keep it super simple right now. I'm just trying to get you up and running quickly. So we're going to define one type, some basic fields, just to make sure that we can load that schema, add some data, and query that data. That's what this video is all about. All right, let's get back here. So in order to load a schema up right away, the fastest way is to use a curl command, because that curl command will let us execute the admin schema endpoint with our current schema. This is the fastest way for us in this video to do that. Eventually, I'll show you how we can do that in a Go program as well. Now, I said I was going to keep my schema or my type system simple, and I have. We've got one type named city. It's got four fields, ID, lat, long, and name. We've used those scalar types, so Latin long or floats, name is a string. Now the ID field is using a special GraphQL type called ID. What this represents is an auto-generated unique ID for every city that we add to the database. So it's nice to have that facility. Now the exclamation point, what that means is that this is a non-nullable field. The data for this field is mandatory, so it's got to be included. Now, because of the ID field, we're going to get already um, the ability to search on that ID. I'm going to show you how all that works. But I also want to be able to search by name. So I've added this at search to the type declaration. And I'm telling, telling through the GraphQL here, I'm saying I want to do an exact search, an exact string search. I'll show you how that is set up. There's different types of filters or search types that you can use. I'm specifying exact here. OK, great. So again, I just wanted to start with a very simple schema. So here we are. If I hit Enter on this curl command, we will now see code success message done. Beautiful. We now have a very simple city um, defined now in the database that we can start adding data to and querying data out of. 
Now, I don't want to do everything on curl. That won't be fun. So what I've done already is downloaded a cool workbench called the GraphQL Playground. And the GraphQL Playground can be found right here in Apollo GraphQL. Com. It's a really nice UI, it runs natively, it uses Electron to do it, so it supports all the different operating systems. And if you get over to their repo here, um, and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see how you can download um, the different uh, applications for the different, or the application for the different operating systems. And I've already done all of that. So what I'm going to do is come over here and now load the GraphQL Playground. It's really important that you um, load your schema up first before you run this, okay? So that's why I did that schema first. Now, what I'm going to do is point the Playground here to uh, DGraph running on localhost 8080. There it is. And you can see that we have no errors, no issues, nothing. But you also see I've already kind of helped us along here, preloaded a mutation command. Now, before we get to adding a city into our database, what I'd like to do is click on this schema document for, for you over here. If you look here, this is the type that we added through the curl command. That's our type. This is the type of data that we want to store right now. You can see it looks identical outside of that search syntax uh, to the data that we defined. However, there's a bunch of other types here that are defined, and this is thanks to dgraph. What dgraph has done for us is based on how we declared our city, um, has built an entire CRUD API for us. If we add this ID field, we're going to get an entire CRUD API built for us. And all of these types that you're seeing, like this payload type, that's for the return of a CRUD API. And filtering for searching and ordering, right? And patching, how we, how we do that update. All of these types, plus some basic other scalar types like the date time, are all generated for you for free by dgraph just for loading that schema. And if you look, here it is. Here's our mutation and our query types. This is our CRUD API. I will never, ever have to build or write a CRUD API ever again. I just have to access this one that dgraph has already implemented using GraphQL. It's beautiful. And you can see here that we can add, update, and delete a city now through these mutation functions. We just got to learn how to execute these functions. And on the left-hand side, I'm showing you how to do that. So if we want to execute one of these mutation functions, then we're going to use this GraphQL syntax. We're going to define that we want to execute a mutation function. Then we're going to define the function that we want to execute. We're going to provide that input, which is basically a city value, right, or city node. And so here's our city node right here. There it is, name Sydney Latin long. And then the payload, which is the return for the add city, um, we're going to say that we want the entire city back. So when you have the schema, then it's, it becomes a little, you know, it becomes easier to be able to, to know how do I access the API that's been um, defined for me and how do I do these things. What's also cool about this tool before we run the mutation is that your CRUD API is fully documented now through the Docs tab. So even though we're going to run at city and I was looking at the wrong, the raw schema, I can come in here and click and go, oh, I see, add city, input, there it is, input arguments, OK, there they are. Um, and you can go ahead and start to navigate the docs really, really nicely. All right, so what I'm going to do now is run this mutation so we can add this data into the database. There it is, OK? So we didn't have any errors. We would have gotten some error information back. Um, we have the city, and it came back. but. Now that we've loaded it, let's really validate that the city is in the database. So now we need to run a couple of those query functions here. And just to save time, I've got a little cheat sheet here that will let me do these queries. So notice on the mutation, we started with the word mutation for the type and then the function that was in that mutation type. Well, look now, we've got query. All right, we come back here. We've got our query. There it is. And 
Now we can use the get city function, and it wants an ID. And the ID that came back on that other uh, save was 02. So, right, we can see here that was 02. So if I run this query now, there it is. So we know that that data really is in there with 02. But what about that Sydney name search? No worries. Let's use the query city function. That was part of that query type. There it is. And we can ask for an exact name search. There it is for Sydney. And if I hit play, oh, there it is again. We got that. That's, that's beautiful. So we can see here that we are able to use this fully functional, fully functional um, CRED API that's been given to us uh, for free, basically, by um, dgraph, all because we added that type. The last thing I want to show you here are these filter types. So remember how I said exact on the type system, right? I said exact. If we come back here, you could see I said search by exact. Well, when I said exact, I was saying to use the string exact filter. But here you have full text, you got hash, you got regular expressions, you got term. So there's other string filters I could have chosen, and I could have just used that name in the schema as well. Really, really great stuff. Now that you have a dgraph running locally, you've got your playground going. I've shown you how to define a schema, add some data, query some data using the CRUD API that dgraph provides for free. You're now ready to come and navigate to the graphql.dgraph.io page here, slash docs. And, and this will get you started to be able to do even a little bit more and more um, advanced stuff using the playground right now to learn. And, and, and the next video that I'm going to show you, now that we have a working dgraph environment, a playground, and we're, we're learning how to deal with schemas and learning how to execute that CRUD API, the next video in this series will be about doing everything that we just did um, from the GraphQL side in a Go program. Really, really excited to share that with you. But hopefully this gets you up and running very quickly and gets you on your way to using dgraph and GraphQL.